Hi everyone, my name is Tomas. I'm one of the co-founders of Graphite, the company building code review for fast-moving teams. And today, I'm here to talk to you about Stack PRs, a workflow that we think helps you stand blocked and develop quickly. So, we like to usually describe this workflow with a story. So let's imagine that, starting today, we're both developers for a new social media company. So we have users, those users create posts, and we want users to be able to comment on their posts. And not only do we want them to be able to comment on these posts, we want them to be able to react to each other's comments, meaning to attach an emoji that everyone else can see to that comment. Cool. So this is probably two features. We want to implement them both. They're both high pry. And so being the diligent engineers we are, we go ahead, we write the code for commenting. It takes about 2,000 lines, touches many parts of the site, and we put up the PR. Great. We tag our reviewers, and now, well, well now we're kind of stuck. Right? We want to work on reactions, but because reactions depends on comments, we're in kind of a sticky situation because code review, as we know it, is predicated on this idea that I'm always developing off of main. And so I could go ahead and ask my reviewer to review my PR right now because I want to get this code into main so that I can branch off of it so that I can start reactions. Kind of shitty for both of us. They are suddenly thrashed where I'm asking them to take time out of their day to sit down, review this multi-thousand line PR. And maybe I need to do that to multiple people, especially if I'm touching many, many different parts of the site. It's also not great for me because I end up in this situation where I'm not really getting a wonderful review. I'm getting a probably pretty rushed review from a reviewer that has way too many other things to do. So door number two is I can go ahead and I can work on something else. I can thrash myself, right? Even though I know reactions is the highest price thing I can be working on, I'm in this position where working on it actually is pretty difficult for me. Uh, and so instead, maybe I work on some bug fixes, maybe I clean something else up, maybe I work on a feature that I'm interested in but regardless, I'm not working on the highest price thing. The other thing I can do is I can go ahead and fold the reactions code into the comments PR, but then all of the challenges which I just described to you become worse because suddenly it's not a 2000 line change, it's a 4000 line change. It touches many more parts of our code base and suddenly getting this reviewed and getting it out to users is gonna take forever and a half and probably involve a lot of merge conflicts. So what am I to do? Well. Most of us are going to opt usually to wait. And so we wait. We wait because, as I said, code review is this I, code review is usually based on this idea that we're constantly bre breaking off of main. We're creating pull requests back into it, and then we're going from those into new pull requests. And so we wait until eventually we get reviewed. We get reviewed, we get merged, and we sit and wonder, does it have to be this way, right? What if I didn't have to branch off of main? Is there something else we could be doing? Well, let's just, let's spitball for a second. What if that second PR, those reactions, I just went ahead and I opened up off of comments. And so rather than having this feature branch comments, which we create a pull request in and then stop, I have this feature branch comments, I create a pull request for it, and then I continue to develop on top of it. And I go ahead and develop reactions and I create a pull request for that, leading to have two open pull requests with dependencies between them. Well, this is stacking. That's all it is. It's this idea of having multiple open pull requests that we can review independently, that we can merge in sequential order because they do have dependencies, uh, but we can continue developing even though one ha even though the dependent branches d have dependencies which have not yet been approved or merged into main. And once you start stacking, you realize, well, why not take this further? Comments actually isn't really one change, right? It's probably many changes. That's how we think about it as developers. There are database changes involved, there are API level changes involved, there's UI involved. Who knows? Perhaps there are many different things, perhaps there are many different microservices even that we touch to make it happen. Why do I, as a developer, have to put that all in one PR, which then has to get many, many different reviewers, when instead I could break that out into multiple PRs? And when you start stacking, this is what you usually see. You break out these dependent changes into a sequence of PRs that can be reviewed and merged independently. And so beyond keeping you unblocked, there are a few advantages to this approach. One is you just get better reviews. I know I was talking about it earlier, but imagine the difference between having to review two, call it 400 line PRs and 1000 line PR. 
it's usually much harder to get the thousand line PRs context into your head to understand what all the different systems are, how they work, and to even know what you should be reviewing. Frequently, if I'm tagged as a reviewer in a multi thousand line PR, I may have context on part of the code base, but perhaps I don't have context on all of it. And so when you break out these changes, it's easier for people to identify, oh, this is the one that needs my review. This is my area of expertise. This is what I can add here. Two, because I'm getting better reviews and faster reviews because these are smaller, I can merge faster. And merging faster means that everything else in our development cycle moves faster. Other people can start to build on top of that faster. I can start to iterate faster on the experience as it goes out to users faster. We can start to deploy faster. And the last part of it, building on that, is that we have fewer conflicts. Because I'm not forking off of main and developing in my own branch for days at a time, everything is being kept in sync together faster. And so the chance that I have a merge conflict is smaller, and if I do have a merge conflict, it's probably easier to resolve. Now, this isn't a new idea. Actually, if you were to go ahead and open Google's Eng Practices Wiki hosted on GitHub, they have a whole page on why, why, why write small code review. Um, Small code reviews, as I said, are reviewed more quickly. They're more thoroughly reviewed. They're less likely to introduce bugs, and when they do introduce bugs, they're easier to revert. And not only is this not a new idea, there are even memes about it. People talk around how 10 lines of code equals 10 issues, but 500 lines of code looks fine. That's because no one's reading your 500 line PR. At best, they're taking a, they're taking a once over. They're saying, eh, this looks fine. I'll let you figure out if it has a bug. And then they're just approving it. And that's not good for the company as a whole. Taking that all into account, it sounds as if we had smaller PRs, life would just be better. So why don't we all do this? Why, why is this a thing that we are even having a conversation about? And the truth is that today, a lot of our process and a lot of our tooling doesn't really support it. The first thing it doesn't support is that it can become hard to rebase. So in the example of comments, let's say that I go ahead and I write comments, I write reactions, and then someone says, actually, for comments, we want the UI to look slightly differently. Well, that's fine. I can update the branch. I'm used to doing that all the time. But how do I move reactions on top of the new branch or on top of the new commit that's in that branch? That's a rebase operation, which, while possible in Git, is probably one that you and I would have to look up because we don't know it off the top of our head. Door number two is it's hard to visualize, both for the author and a reviewer. It can be hard enough to know what, br what branch another branch is descendant of. Git doesn't actually keep that information in its, in its own in-memory store. And we, as developers, rarely visualize our Git tree. We usually just assume, ah, I know there's a linear history and I know that I branch off of it. And not only is it hard for us as authors, it's hard for us as reviewers. If you come to me as a reviewer and say, hey, here's a PR reaction, and it's based on a lot of code that I don't understand, I'm likely to be like, what, what am I reading? Where is this coming from? What is this other code? What's the context? And then lastly, it's harder to merge. It doesn't have to be, which is the interesting thing, but it certainly is in the sense of if I have three PRs, which are all dependent on one another, and I want to go ahead and merge all three, right now it's a fairly manual process. I go ahead and I close the first branch. I then go ahead, rebase the second one, wait for it to pass, close it. I then go ahead, rebase the third one, wait for it to pass, close it. And that process takes a lot of time. Now being a developer, I hear these and I say, well, these actually all seem like fairly automatable problems. So is this a place that tooling can help? And the short answer is yes, absolutely. Now there are many tools that help you navigate stacked PRs. I, working at Graphite, am most familiar with the tool, and so that's the one I'm gonna to choose to talk about. But many of the features that I'm discussing are not unique to Graphite, but are common across tools that help support stacked PRs. So the first challenge we talked about, hard to rebase. With Graphite, or with many of these tools, when you go ahead and create a commit on a branch, which is a dependency of another branch, it's automatically detected for you, and then those upstack branches are rebased for you. In the event that you have a rebase conflict, so let's pretend that we have database changes, API changes, UI changes, and then reactions. In the event that the API changes had a rebase, create a merge conflict up the stack as we're restacking, what happens is that Graphite will go ahead, it'll drop you into merge conflict resolution, the same that you would for any Git, Git merge conflict. You go ahead, you resolve it, you type GT continue, and then it automatically takes that change and applies the upstack for you, such that you only have to reply rebase conflicts once. 
We find that this is frequently a fear of people who have never used the workflow. And once you start using the workflow, you find that resolving rebase conflicts is easier than you expect because your changes are smaller than you're used to. And two, they don't actually happen as commonly as you would think. It's frequent that we think, yes, I need to change this part of the code base. For example, I need to change the UI of comments and that may affect reactions. But in truth, these parts of code tend to be separated and so changing one doesn't necessarily affect the other. Two, it can be hard to visualize. In Graphite, when you go ahead and you create a stack, we go ahead and visualize that for you in our web UI. It can show you exactly what the status of each part of the stack is. It can go ahead and show you which ones are ready to be merged, which ones are not. It shows that you the dependencies, and it does so not only for simple stacks, for example, the linear one I just described, but for complicated one, where you have one parent branch with, which has multiple children. Not only does it do this in the Graphite web UI, but when you submit through Graphite, it automatically goes ahead and posts a comment to GitHub showing you what this visualization looks like so that both you and your author can be kept up to date on, okay, these are the branches involved, this is where they are, and this is what I'm reviewing. Lastly, merging. Before I described a very manual process that if you've experimented with stacking, or perhaps you've experimented with branching off a branch, you've probably had the misfortune of dealing with. In Graphite, you can go ahead, select a stack, and say, merge this for me. And what it will do is it will go ahead, it will take the basemost branch, it will merge it in, it will then go to the next branch, rebase it, and then merge it in, and it will then go to the next one, rebase it, and merge it in. Or if you simply want a faster atomic merge, what you can do is you can tell it to squash all three branches into one commit and then automatically merge that into main. So in short, yes, this is a place that tooling can help. Stacking is a workflow that becomes very possible and keeps you unblocked as, as you adopt tooling to make it more possible for yourself. In short, you should stack your changes, which allows you to write smaller PRs, which allows you to receive better reviews, and which ultimately allows you to ship faster. Thank you. For any questions, comments, and concerns, again, my name is Tomas. Feel free to email me at tomas.graphite.dev. Happy to respond and happy to talk more about this workflow.